Welcome back all of my wildcats. So today's video is going to be kind of all over the place. I feel like and I'm not going to make it a long video. Also, I am not asking for sympathy or people to feel bad for me or feel bad for the situation. Um before we get started, please give us a follow and join us and become a wildcat with us because once I get into this video, it's probably, I'm not going to be mentioning liking this video or subscribing or any of that. I would just like if you would want to join us on our journey, then you can go ahead and become a wildcat with us. So, um... I have been dreading talking about this. It's been uh, like a five-ish months. Um, before, in the beginning, when you're watching our videos, I would talk about when we had multiple cats in the house, and that is because we had a mama cat to our little babies, um, Hope and Binks. And originally, we were always going to keep two kittens. And actually, short story in this story is that I predicted in a sense of what our exotic cats could look like. Because we have Highlanders, and one of them is a Highlander slash ragdoll. Um, and the dad has stripes, and the mom has like a little bit of spots and stripes on her but you just couldn't really see them so I was like what if we had a baby that was like white and had like black stripes and spots and um, she ended up getting pregnant because we were you know planning on breeding our cats and selling babies and I didn't want to think of the bad outcomes that could happen and you know I just think that the worst happened that I didn't think about. Um, I'm going to try and put in some clips in this video of, you know, happy moments and memories of our baby that we did lose. Unfortunately, um, after our mama cat had her babies, Everything was going fine. She was feeding them. Um, she was a great mom as the first time too. Um, I guess what happened is, is one of our cats in the house had gotten sick and had spread it to like every cat. And we even, okay, so we had them separate. The mom and the babies were in another room and the door was always shut. They were never next to each other. The thing is, it was... <sighs> I had let our dad, Sapphire, in the room. And it didn't dawn on me that they were sick. So he had went in there when the babies were born. And he was licking them, helping the mom. And that's something you don't really see. So he was happy and... Um, he was helping getting them clean, so he must have had the cold on him, and it passed. Or maybe Stella had had it, and she got it from under the door and passed it on. So I was giving our kids antibiotics for over two weeks, and our baby that, you know, got really, really sick, um, it went from one day You can tell that there was something wrong, and then the next day just transitioned to uh, completely worse. I wasn't planning on doing this video because I didn't think I would even be able to do this video. <sighs> Anyways, um, you know, I ended up taking her the whole time we thought it was a boy. I ended up taking her to the emergency room and you know like 
we had hope. The doctor had hope. He even said that maybe we should put her down. And I really didn't want to. Because for me, I have never dealt with anything um, passing, including family. No, I haven't been through an experience like this before. This is like a movie because the doctor's like, don't trust me. I don't think you should trust me. I think, you know, there's something that could be done. Um, we ended up leaving her for a couple days. We would come back at night and come pick her up, but they needed to keep her to put her on a breathing machine. It's so um, hazy, but um, basically they took an x-ray and they showed me that it wasn't good. Her her heart was foggy with ammonia. And at this point, she was past like two weeks old. I was up a lot at nighttime taking care of her and I had a scare, you know, I gave her sugar and water because I thought she was going right then and there one night. But once that had happened and we ended up going to the hospital back and forth, I thought that there was more hope and I was um, saving her in a way. And it was about three, three days of no sleep besides the few weeks that I was taking care of her and bottle feeding and everything. The third day, she was supposed to go back to the hospital because they wanted her there again. You know, they were like, well, if it's not getting better, we want to keep doing what we're doing. And at the last minute, they switched my doctors. And the doctor had said, well, I think she's fine now. We can go ahead and we can transition her from formula to wet food, which doesn't seem very accurate, right? Because little babies need the nutrition that the mom is giving off. And in that food, where is that exactly? Maybe there were some, but there wasn't enough. So we took her home and she ended up eating just fine and I was actually very very happy because I was like wow this is maybe this is working she looks happy she looks full she she ended up sleeping after we fed her um, a couple times and then um, the night had come where I would feed again and I would set my alarm to do so Um, when I woke up to feed her at, um, I think it was four in the morning because I had fed her at 12 in the morning. So I believe it was four in the morning and, um, something like that. I think it was 12 or four in the morning. Um. She was not breathing, and I had actually given her mouth to mouth, and she ended up throwing up in my mouth, which was, it, to me, it's like whatever, because I was just trying to make sure she was going to breathe. So I took her to the emergency room again, because this is probably about the third time I've done that at nighttime, and um, she... She did not make it, unfortunately, so they gave me the option to, um, you know, if I wanted her ashes, I could have them, and obviously that's what I was going to do. It's unfortunate because her 
body was already cold when I picked her up. So it was pretty obvious that she went in her sleep. We already picked out a name for her. Um, you know, while this was all going on and we named her Hellite, like the stone, because she was white and black. And I have a thing for stones and like healing and all that. So, um, this is how I am to, um, We'll go ahead and I will show you her in this video so you can see. She was the only little baby that had, like, these perfect little toes. And, like, um, some of our cats have, like, well, obviously they all have extra toes, but a couple of them have, like, two extra toes, and she actually had just, like, the one extra toe, so she has, like, five death certificates with her ashes and I'm just going to keep all this together and keep her up on my dresser so I can see her all the time. And this is probably the hardest thing that I have experienced. Having to raise something and having hope and trying to save her and doing everything I can and not caring how much money it took to do it, but in the end it didn't turn that way. Which is okay because now she's not suffering. So even though this video is sad, Now you know who Howlite is, and she is still part of the Wildcat family.